If you're a sci-fi fan, you know that many different stories usually involve some kind of cloning. For example, the clone troopers from Star Wars, or the idea of cloned humans from various sci-fi stories by Philip K. Dick, all had a very similar concept behind it. All of these humans were grown in somewhat artificial conditions. Basically, they were two babies. They were grown in conditions outside of human body and usually cloned from a single cell. But unlike in those science fiction stories, the reality is a little bit more different. As the scientists discovered in the last few decades, trying to create an artificial clone of anything, even a relatively simpler organism, or moreover create an actual functioning embryo, without the use of the natural insemination, is actually practically impossible. Or at least it was impossible until some of the more recent studies that slowly started to figure out how the embryos actually grow and how we can potentially use this to create something a little bit more complex for potential medical studies. And though naturally it already kind of raises a lot of ethical questions here, we're not really talking about humans right now. In this case, the scientists were able to work out how to create simple tiny mice, or the embryo of mice that could potentially create mice one day, although at the moment all of them remained as embryos and never really turned into actual life. But what makes these particular discoveries important? Well, when it comes to, for example, biological printing, or the idea of making organs using 3D bioprinter, there is a limitation. Today it's extremely difficult to create something that can potentially replace an organ, a human organ or any other organ in any other animal. But in the last decade, the scientists came up with a concept that we currently refer to as organoids. These are simplified versions of different organs, this is an intestinal organoid, developed from different stem cells and allowed to create a kind of a model of a potential organ in order to study certain effects or in order to study various medicines. And today a lot of these organoid studies have slowly been replacing a lot of previously somewhat unethical studies on various animals. So let's just say you're trying to test a drug that's supposed to act on the human stomach. Well, by creating a tiny model of the intestinal organoid, like this one that you see right here, it becomes possible to do so relatively cheap and without any ethical implications from animal studies. But even though organoids have been already used many times, they do have a limitation compared to what's known as a synthetic embryo. And a lot of modern studies have actually been trying to focus on that. They've been trying to create a synthetic embryo, or essentially something that might resemble this, but without the use of this, and by just cloning it using artificial methods, but by also limiting the development cycle, making sure that it doesn't turn into an actual animal, because then it kind of creates a lot of ethical risks, which would then allow the scientists to actually use this for much more thorough scientific tests, or for potential experiments where using a living animal might be too dangerous or extremely unethical. Something that's definitely more complex than organoid, but something that cannot ever develop into a functioning creature, even if you were to give it all of the needed conditions. And looks like, for the first time ever, the scientists might have succeeded in finally doing this. And the reason it's kind of surprising is actually because how apparently difficult it is to create these embryos to begin with. And that's because, in this case, the scientists just used a single stem cell. Not a sperm cell, not any kind of a cell that was fertilized, not a cell that involved any kind of sexual activity. It was just a stem cell from a body of a mouse. A cell that in theory could maybe develop into anything inside the mouse, including things like skin cells, things like brain cells, and so on. But by itself, that one single cell is not an actual creature, and so it should not really be too unethical to experiment on it. But making it into a single cell is one thing. How do you turn it into a functioning embryo, synthetic embryo, that doesn't actually become anything more complex afterwards? Well, to start, the scientists tried to do this by using a fertilized cell. Essentially a cell that did involve some kind of a sexual interaction. And for this study, they were able to develop an artificial womb to make these cells grow into a tiny embryo. Which was a huge breakthrough because none of these embryos have ever survived in petri dishes before. And so in some sense, the scientists here created what you would call an artificial womb. Or a kind of an external uterus that could be then used to grow more embryos. Although it didn't actually look like this at all. It sort of looked like this. The rotating centrifuge on the right, that's the artificial womb. With the movement simulating how the blood and nutrients flow inside the placenta, and the device also replicating the atmospheric pressure that you would usually find inside the uterus of a mouse. And it's actually this device right here that was so groundbreaking in 2021, because it's now been used again in this new study that just used stem cells, 
not the fertilized cells like before. And to be more exact, this new study created model embryos, once again using mouse stem cells, that managed to form the three primary components inside the mouse embryo. A brain, a beating heart, and the foundation for pretty much all of the organs in the body. And they did so by creating a kind of a mimic, using the device I just showed you, creating a unique environment for each individual stem cell that they used. Although in this case, the actual process was a little bit more complicated than using a single cell. Instead, they grew three separate types of cells by using specific environments for each of those cells, then placing this in the artificial womb and having these cells to some extent interact with one another, in this case inducing a unique environment that would then produce very specific chemical signals, they noticed that three types of these mixed cells started to self-organize into a structure resembling an early embryo, which would then naturally progress into further developmental stages. And intriguingly, they even at some point had a beating heart and even an entire brain including the sections that resembled a typical mouse. However, this was not a mouse embryo. And this was tested pretty early on. When the scientists placed these synthetic embryos into a womb of an actual mouse, none of them survived and none of them developed into anything. So these were just model embryos, synthetic embryos. Which is super important for those ethical considerations. If these embryos ended up developing into an actual creature, this would then create a major problem for any potential biological studies. Because basically you're then still testing this on a living animal. But they did not. And so the synthetic embryos, at least ethically, could not really be seen as a living being. Although some did develop to about half of the gestation period of a typical mouse. Which I guess is an important side note. But the important question here is, why would this be important for medical studies and how can this be used for potential research? Well, first of all, when compared to the organoid that I previously mentioned, which are already used in various studies, an artificial embryo or a synthetic embryo is just way more complex and presents an ethical opportunity to test things that would be otherwise impossible, especially if we're talking about human heart. In other words, the scientists here suggest that it could be used to create a kind of an artificial human embryo that's not really human and can never become a human, but that can be used for medical studies in the future, which could be used to study various effects of various medicines or chemicals on the human organs, or more importantly, to potentially learn why certain embryos fail during pregnancy and how it can help them develop into healthy embryos. Which is exactly what propelled the main scientist in the study to begin these studies. She experienced an abnormal pregnancy early on and wanted to understand how to avoid this in the future, specifically because very often these failed pregnancies can actually also result in the mother dying in childbirth as well. And so by studying how these embryos grow, how they develop, and what actually happens early on to create an embryo that could lead to some abnormal pregnancies was initially the main reason for this research. But now it has a lot of other potentials, and specifically in regards to medical research that's unavailable to us because of ethical reasons. On the other hand, these can also be used to develop potential organs for organ transplants. For example, a few months ago there was a story about a man who received a pig heart transplant that unfortunately passed away because the heart unfortunately failed. But imagine this being done with a human heart that was not transplanted from a human being, but was grown from these synthetic embryos. And because today so many people rely on organ donations for potential survival and are actually on the wait list and unfortunately never really make it, this particular discovery could one day save millions of lives. As a personal side note, unfortunately my mom passed away because she was on a wait list for a liver transplant and she never got one. So one day, someone could be saved by a liver that was developed in one of these embryos. But naturally, there are still some potential ethical questions that can be raised here as well. So on the one hand, this type of an embryo that was created using stem cells and does not have a potential to create a living being should technically be treated like an organoid, without any rights. But some countries, for example Australia, have already proposed that just based on the appearance it could still be treated like a natural embryo and thus be protected as well. In other words, in Australia this would still be illegal. But in countries like UK, US and now Japan, the synthetic embryos are now officially treated differently from embryos because they cannot produce a living baby. Which means that this type of research would be legal and ethical in those countries. However, there are still ways to make this somewhat unethical and to some extent somewhat illegal. For example, you can actually create a stem cell out of any cell in your body 
These are known as induced pluripotent stem cells, IPS. And so in other words, there's actually a way to turn a normal skin cell, for example, into a stem cell by performing certain chemical reactions, which at least in theory, can then become an embryo. And if this is done without someone's consent, this obviously creates a bit of a problem. Now, it still doesn't mean that we can actually create some kind of a clone army by basically just taking a hair or a skin cell from someone's body, but it does mean that, at least in theory, we could maybe create some kind of an artificial embryo to then grow certain organs and harvest them for a certain medical procedure. That naturally does sound pretty illegal and pretty unethical. I mean, in some dystopian future, imagine one day discovering that there is a bunch of people somewhere that literally have a copy of your eyes. Because someone out there stole your hair or possibly a piece of your skin and turned this into a cell that became one of these embryos. So definitely a technology we should still maybe be a little bit careful about. But nevertheless, a super important discovery for medical reasons. For example, one of the main discoveries from this particular study was actually in regards to how these early cells end up going from just a few cells to an actual organ. So for example, in order to develop this heart, the early cells didn't just receive chemical signals, but there was also a very important mechanical interaction, usually through touch. And it's really the combination of chemicals and specific mechanical signals that then resulted in all of this becoming a heart. How all of this works and what sort of mechanical interaction is required to create a heart is still a big mystery. But the scientists succeeded here and might be able to answer this in some of the future studies. The other major advance in this particular study was the ability for the scientists to create pretty much almost the entire brain of these early mice. Something that has never been done before and something that's super important because neurodevelopment is one of the most complex development in our bodies. And so currently this opens a lot of possibilities for future research when it comes to literally understanding how brains work and how intelligence develops as well. But at the moment, all of this is still in its infancy. These are still very new technologies, very new discoveries, and at this point, nobody really knows where all of this goes just yet. But if everything goes well, this might lead to some incredible technologies that might help save lives. All of this thanks to this new invention that seems to simulate what happens inside a womb. And so I guess until future discoveries and until future studies, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space, sciences and biology, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.